Google didn't just roll out a new search feature, they've changed how search works forever. AI mode is now live across the US and it's not following the old SEO playbook. It generates answers, compares products, and sometimes completes tasks all before the user ever clicks. If your content isn't structured for that system, you're gonna be buried, you're gonna be skipped. Now let's be clear, SEO still matters. It's still the foundation, but visibility now depends on how AI agents extract, interpret, and reassemble your content. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through 10 strategies to rank inside Google's AI mode. These aren't theories, that the same techniques we've used for brands already being cited in AI overviews and Gemini responses. And if you think this is just another optimized for featured snippets checklist, think again. Wait until you see how Gemini handles things like schema and that structured input, which pages silently ignore. Let's get into it. So first up, most people optimize for users and that's great, but AI agents aren't users, they're doers. AI agents are evolving fast. Right now, they can summarize, they can compare, and soon they'll be able to jump into your website, book something, even buy something, but we're not fully there yet. This future is coming really fast, so start preparing for it now. For AI agents, they don't scroll, they don't interpret unclear buttons, and they don't guess. So here's a little UX test to see if an AI agent can complete a task on your website, like for booking demos or finding a refund policy without struggling. Run through this little checklist for your website. Do you have a clear CTA within three seconds? No hidden JavaScript. Forms that use native HTML elements, not fancy front-end libraries. Actual button tags, not div tags masquerading as clickable items. No accordion content or click to reveal tabs. Strategy two, use deep structured schema markup. So schema is no longer about appearing for rich results. It's about being legible to LLMs. Think of your site like a data warehouse. Schema isn't the decoration, it's how you get indexed into the AI's brain. So here's the minimum schema stack for 2025. Organization, web page, breadcrumb list for context and brand grounding. FAQ page, how to, product, review, article, for passage level reuse, video object schema for full multimedia comprehension, and also use things like reviewed by, publisher, date published, and author for EEAT clarity. So here's a prompt test that you can use if you're already ranking really well in Google. Give me a trusted source explaining how your business function works. If you don't appear, your schema probably isn't working hard enough and you need to fix that. Strategy three, create pages around questions, not just keywords. Google AI mode doesn't rank pages by keyword anymore. It breaks down your question into micro queries. For example, for the main term hair loss supplement, it could be broken down into a multiplicity of different subqueries, like best supplements for postpartum hair loss. Is biotin safe during pregnancy? Or even something like, what helps chemo-induce hair loss? These don't show up in traditional keyword tools, but AI mode still answers them if your content does first. Where do you put these very specific subqueries in your content? You can put them as H2s in blog posts with direct answers, FAQ page schema, Q&As in product descriptions, even YouTube shorts pinned with real user questions. So here's another prompt you can use in any LLM, let's say ChatGPT. Give me 15 buy questions before someone purchases your product. Now you go answer all those 15 questions in your content. Strategy four, optimize for query fan out. Now this next one changed the way we think about AI search altogether, because what looks like just one search really isn't. Behind every user query in AI mode, Google is quietly running a dozen of sub queries, fragmenting the intent, chasing down precision and stitching together the answer from multiple sources. This means you don't win the whole question, you just need to be the best part of one tiny part of it. And that concept is called query fan out. AI mode reverse engineers user intent, it splits queries into fragments, so you just need to win one. For example, best laptops for video editing under a thousand bucks. This gets atomized into laptops under a thousand dollars, best laptops for Premiere Pro, battery life for editing laptops. So your page should look like this. Use a prompt style H2, such as, is the model of laptop, for instance, good for editing? Keep answers under 70 words. Add comparison tables for each one of those products. Use schema to explain your snippets, review, FAQ, and product, and run that page through Gemini. Do you show up as a slice of that question in multiple queries? you're on the right track. Strategy five, maximize visibility across all of Google's surfaces. Now this is bigger than just your website. AI mode pulls from your site, but also visibility across Google's own surfaces, like YouTube or Google Business Profile. So you need to strengthen your overall presence. I always say to people, if you're not feeding the content into Google's ecosystem, you're feeding your competitors instead. Google wants you to feature and use and upload content to YouTube Shorts, shopping feeds, business profiles, because it keeps users on their platform and it keeps the ad revenue sky high. So your job is to be visible across every Google surface. Think about YouTube Shorts for 30 to 60 second question and answer style content. Google Business Profiles, you can take posts and articles from your content on your blog and post them on your Google Business Profile, add reviews of the keywords, answer your Q&A section, and Merchant Center. This is really important for e-commerce. This will sync with real-time data directly into Gemini's decision layer. And Maps and Local, updated descriptions, NAP consistency, 
and visual credibility through images. So this is an example of a repurposed stack you can use for your website to appear in these Google services. Blog into a 60 second short, into a Google post, into a shopping FAQ, and embed it into your website as a review. So something you can do is go into AI mode and ask it to compare these three businesses and ask which one has better reviews in Google. And if your business profile isn't relevant or it isn't featured first, well, Gemini is probably ignoring you for particular reasons. So start getting on these platforms, start getting reviews, start engaging with your user base on these platforms. Strategy six, what Reddit teaches AI mode. In a second, I'm gonna show you how to build tools in AI that they can't summarize. But first, here's a trick that I almost didn't share. Reddit is Gemini's secret weapon. When AI mode breaks down your queries into pieces, it loves pulling phrasing, emotional cues, and crowdsourced language from Reddit. If you're not using Reddit threads to shape your headings and rewrite your hooks and guide your FAQs, you're missing out on the best AI optimization tool and technique that no one's talking about right now. Here's a mini process that you can use to update your content to be AI readable. Find a pain point that has been upvoted a hundred times in a Reddit thread or a very popular subreddit. Copy that phrasing, tidy it up, and use that as a heading or a H2. Use it in your FAQs or list format, and just watch how much more your content sticks in these AI answers, and it's gonna be better for the user. So what we're doing here is reverse engineering the data that Gemini trains on. Now let's talk about tools that AI can't steal. Strategy seven, build interactive tools that AI can't summarize and people can't forget. Make something that an LLM can't summarize. AI is very good at compressing content, but it can't complete forms around calculations or guide users through an interactive logical flow. And in the world of generic AI answers, your uniqueness becomes your visibility. Here are tool ideas that AI can't replicate that easy. And the reason that I'm very big on this is your brand needs to stick out amongst your competitors. And a great way of doing that is building things like calculators, building unique tools, that people are bookmarking and using later and also searching for those tools later on. It's a great way to increase brand visibility and stick out. Instead of a regular blog post talking about what is accounting software, why not build something that helps you select accounting software or something that's like a profit margin calculator that's unique to your website, Google can't summarize or replicate and a user will interact with to increase dwell time on your website. All of it feeds back into product-led SEO, which is becoming hugely important now thinking about how it's gonna impact AI mode. So here's some tool ideas that AI can't easily replicate and you can build on your website. Think about the best plan for me configurators, visual price tool comparisons, ROI calculators, prompt builders or snippet previewers, interactive quizzes or onboarding flows. And the reason for doing this is these things don't scale. It's about sticking in someone's brain. You want someone to think, oh yeah, that site has a really cool quiz. Or that's where I got that AI prompt from that was really unique. LLMs may forget, but humans don't. So here's a free idea for you if you're an SEO agency. What you can do is you can create a blog article about SEO pricing. And within that article, you can embed an SEO ROI calculator. That's gonna be quite unique to the market. It's gonna be quite unique to users. And people will actually start using that tool. You can also add software application schema or product schema to it and label it clearly. Try this now and learn more. Another great example of this is what Canva they did a few years ago. This is a very talked about SEO case study where they built out a lot of pages and a lot of templates for resumes and every single different type of resume you could imagine from a simple one for one for a lawyer. Everyone remembers that story. Everyone remembers those templates and people come back to it every single day. Now you can do the same thing. You can do the same spin on your website, whether it be a calculator, a template, a useful quiz. Here's a Gemini prompt that can help you ideate some of these things that you can put onto your website. Let's say you're a sales consultant. You can ask Gemini, hey, what tools will help me choose the right CRM? And you can can build an interactive quiz based on what it gives you and then even design that in HTML and put that directly onto your website. It's really cool. So suddenly you've turned the AI tool against itself. You're using it to build things that it can't replicate. Isn't that cool? We've actually turned a potential thread of AI replicating our content and summarizing it into something we can use to build out unique ideas and unique content for our website. Strategy eight, make your site technically AI visible. Google's AI mode can't cite what it can't crawl. You can write the best content in the world, but if it's buried under JavaScript, blocked by robot.txt or slow load, Gemini won't even see it. So here's how you can make sure your content actually gets surfaced. Don't block AI. Gemini builds on Google's main index, which is powered by Googlebot. If Googlebot can't crawl, Gemini won't see it either. So your actions can be in your robots.txt file, make sure you're allowing all user agents. You can even include the GPT bot, perplexity bot, and also Google extended. Only restrict bots that you don't need for legal or compliance reasons. And if you must block via robots.txt, use server level methods to control access instead of using things like Cloudflare rules or reverse proxies. Speed matters. AI mobile will prioritize fast loading content and if it can't render a page that quickly, you're out of the answer set. Use things like GT Metrics, Lighthouse, or PageSpeed Insights. Address your core web vitals, avoid heavy JavaScript frameworks for essential content, minimize lazy loading for hero text, H1s, and key paragraphs. What you can do is take your page, paste it into Gemini's browser mode, and if your main content doesn't load that quickly, you've got a visibility problem. Structure your HTML properly. Gemini can pass content section by section. If everything's wrapped up in a div class, it has to guess what's important. So your action here is to use semantic tags, make sure you use your 
main tag, your article tag, your section tag, and your H1 to H4 tag. Keep important content visible in the DOM and avoid hidden JS injected blocks. Avoid accordion tabs for key info like product details, FAQs, or top answers. And you need to force indexing the smart way. Google's AI mode still starts with indexing. If your content isn't in the index, it's not in the answer anyway. Do the basic action in SEO, submit your sitemap to Google Search Console, use the URL inspection tool, push new and updated content live, and regularly check your pages not index report under the coverage tab. Make sure your key content isn't being excluded due to crawled, currently not indexed, or discovered, currently not indexed. So the bottom line is that AI mode is going to be ruthless. If your page is slow, unstructured, hidden behind scripts, it won't get serviced. So this isn't about just SEO performance, it's about being part of the answer at all. Your visibility will start with accessibility, so let those bots in, get it fast, and get it clean. And if you want help auditing this, drop your URL into the comment section, and we'll show you what's blocking AI. Strategy nine, you have to track AI mode visibility. You can't optimize what you don't measure. AI mode won't always send traffic, but it does leave fingerprints and your job is to spot them. So here's how you need to start tracking visibility in the AI search era. The clearest first step is to use Google Search Console to catch early impressions. AI mode is still drawing from the index. So even if clicks drop, rising impressions for long tail keywords, is still being summarized or cited in some way. Now there's been a lot of debate about Google Search Console data not reflecting AI overviews or AI mode at the moment. I believe that will change eventually. So start getting dialed in and baselining the impression data that you can see. So eventually when you do get more data sets coming out of Google Search Console for AI mode, you'll have more leverage to work off. Clean up your GA4 data as well. Too many brands I've seen have never fixed up their true GA4 setup. Now, even after the switch, the tracking is gonna be a lot more complex. So make sure you have defined your main conversions, connected Search Console to GA4, you filter out internal traffic, label traffic sources properly. So when the time comes when you may see a 30% traffic drop, but your conversions are staying flat, it's likely an indication that AI Search or AI Mode in particular has activated. Your website's being summarized, conversions are still coming through, but you're not seeing that active click or user coming through your website, much like you would in SEO. Now, this is the more manual part of this process process at the moment. If you have access to AI mode in Australia, or right now it's rolling out in the US, you're going to have to start documenting where your website is appearing for these searches. What you need to do is take your main keywords and actually plug them manually into search and see what AI mode is pulling out. Then ask yourself, am I being cited? Where am I being cited? Is it my blog? Is it a tool? Is it a Reddit comment? Is it a YouTube video? Which part of the page did it use? and document everything. Even the most meticulous detail is gonna be very important for the future. And you'll start seeing patterns emerge. And if you're a little bit lazy to do that at the moment, there are tools like Peak that we're using currently and keep your eye on SEMrush and Ahrefs because they're gonna be adapting a lot of their tool base to cater for these AI searches. Right now, this is a very early space. So I do recommend tracking this stuff manually, even though it does take more time, but keep tabs. The more the shift happens, the more tools you'll see come out. And to note on traffic, you don't need to obsess over it. AI mode might shrink your sessions, but actually increase your brand exposure. Impression mentions, multi-platform visibility are now new powerful metrics. Whose brand will win in AI mode? They don't just track rankings, they actually track influence. And the final strategy, make AI mode your best sales rep. Now AI mode won't pull full product pages. It'll grab pieces of information, summary, specs, and comparison, and build its own answer. That means your site needs to be structured for product-led SEO. And what you need to focus on is pricing tables with filters or highlights, pro and con summaries for each variant of your product, and things like best for tags for use cases, best for beginners or best for heavy lifters for fitness equipment, and mini explainers under each item that answer real buyer questions. Structure your page how AI mode would understand it with very clear headings, bullet points, short blurbs, internal links to deeper product reviews or comparison pages. Don't just describe the product, help people choose it. This is what AI mode will feature the clearest, most confident answers in the room. So those 10 strategies are how to win in AI mode. In this new search era, with the introduction of Google's AI mode, this isn't traditional SEO anymore. It's what we call answer engine optimization. And the battleground has already shifted. AI mode doesn't care about your rankings at the moment. It cares if you're understandable, actionable, and where it pulls those answers from. Now we've left a AOE checklist in the comments below if you wanna grab that and use that for your website. My final note in this is you don't need to build more content. You need content built for synthesis, not scroll. You don't need more backlinks. You need information clarity that earns citation, not just ranking. You don't need that playbook from 2020 anymore. This is 2025 because it isn't about the 10 blue links on a page anymore. It's about being remembered and trusted by the people. This is something I'm calling organic dominance. And if you get it right, AI mode will cite you. You're not just optimizing for the user anymore. You're training the machines to choose you.